Αγαπητοί φίλοι, έχω την πολύ μεγάλη χαρά και τιμή να βρίσκομαι στο Κέντρο Διαστημικών Επιχειρήσεων τη ΕΣΑ και να έχω κοντά μου τον υπεύθυνο των επιχειρήσεων του σκάφου Τζουζ, τον κύριο Ιγνάσιο Τάνκο. Mr. Tanko, thank you very much for doing this interview. It's a real honor. So, uh, tomorrow is uh, the launch because it was postponed yes. to, today due to bad uh, weather. So, my first question is, how does it feel after all these years you put into this project to finally see it lift off and fade into space? Well, it's, it's a feeling of relief, an accomplishment, but of course it's not quite the end of anything for us is the beginning is the beginning of the journey is the beginning of our actual job and we for us is when we start really operating the mission so it's uh, something that will take us to jupiter and then um, we have the the whole scientific phase of the mission ahead of us so it's a it's a really good feeling but not like things are done quite the opposite things yes. are just starting So it's a it's a big journey, about eight years long. Yes. Uh, and uh, I know that in the beginning, or you will tell me if it is the beginning, you're going to use a very special gravitational assist of the Earth and Moon system. Yes. This has never been attempted before. Is that right? Well, we have done gravitational assist maneuvers in some time, and they've been used by us in previous planetary missions, but they were pioneered uh, by NASA and uh, the, the missions of uh, solar system exploration already back in, in the 60s. Uh, it, what we are doing different this time is we are squeezing even more the energy that we can get out of a gravity assist by combining two assists in one maneuver. So we will fly by the moon and the moon will deflect our trajectory due to the gravitational field. And this will put us in a trajectory immediately after to swing by the Earth. So it will be two in one. What is the, the main power source of JUICE? So in JUICE we use solar arrays. It's a, a specially developed kind of solar array which is designed to work in conditions which are very peculiar, which are those of uh, Ju uh, Jupiter orbit with very low sun intensity, high radiation and very low temperature. So it's, it's quite more uh, exigent in terms of the environment with respect to what you find on Earth, where you have relatively high temperatures and very high intensity or relatively high intensity. So uh, at that distance, Is the solar radiation strong enough to power the, the, the spacecraft with these solar arrays? <laughs> It is if you have big solar arrays, of course, because uh, the, the radiation decreases uh, with the, the square of the, the distance. Square. And then uh, being at Jupiter, the, the sun is really like a bright star mm -hmm. rather than, you know, the, the, the big ball of fire that we yes. see on Earth. So uh, we can get power out of the arrays, but the arrays are massive. They're 85 square meters. They're by far the biggest solar arrays that we have flown in any mission, uh, in planetary science, at least uh, by ESA. And they deliver basically sufficient to power what would be a microwave at home. So about one kilowatt, right. which is, is not very much, but it is sufficient. So the, the systems are designed to cope with this and we will have big batteries also to support us during those periods in which we do not get sun uh, radiation, like for example, during eclipses or right. if we do a maneuver, and so we have to deploy the arrays. I see. You said something also about the radiation of the Jovian system. Yes. Uh, what kind of challenges do you expect and how is the team prepared to face these challenges? Yeah, the, the radiation is one of the, the major challenges of the mission. It's not the only one. It's, it is a very challenging mission. And, but we, can, we are certain that we can meet these challenges. The radiation, which is, is one of the main ones, uh, comes from the fact that uh, Ju so Jupiter has... Um, an extremely strong magnetic field and if you approach the, the vicinity of the planet uh, the same effect occurs as on Earth where you have these radiation belts the, the Van Allen bel belts yes. around the Earth well in, in Jupiter they're supercharged and they are exceedingly powerful and if we fly within this regime, then basically the spacecraft would be fried. Already Europa, which is the second moon uh, in distance to Jupiter, is sufficiently close to this area of high radiation 
that within the two flybys that we have designed, we pretty much max out the radiation dose of the mission. Right. And even then, so we, we take precautions and the, the design of the spacecraft is such that accounts for this level of radiation. So the, all the sensitive electronics and all the delicate pieces that would be most affected by radiation are put inside two boxes inside the spacecraft as close as possible to the core of the spacecraft. We call these the vaults. And these are lined with material that will stop as much as possible the radiation. The focus is Ganymede. The focus is certainly Ganymede, but of course, Europa is one of the most exciting places in the solar system right now because of all the, the open questions about habitability and so on. Even though Ganymede is also an excellent target, in many ways even more promising than Europa, but Europa is very high in the list. It, it has some very peculiar characteristics that you find nowhere else in the solar system. So we, will, we would have been happy to do more, Yes, but the environment would not allow it. So it's such that if we had designed for more flybys of Europa, it would have been a completely different mission. It would have been essentially Europa Clipper rather than Juice. Exactly. So th these two missions are complementary in a way. They are very much complementary, yes. Uh, it, they are very different in some ways. So um, Europa Clipper, for example, it's a, it's a pure orbiter in that it, it never... So it orbits, orbits Jupiter rather than Europa. It uh, flybys. Uh, Europa yes. very often and does it repeatedly, but does it by approaching Europa and then moving away immediately, very quickly, to avoid the stain in this high radiation environment and avoiding, avoiding sustaining a very high radiation dose. We, by going to Ganymede, on the other hand, we avoid this problem and we can manage to not only enter permanent orbit around Ganymede, but actually we will go to a very close orbit as much as the available fuel allows, but we hope to get down to something in the order of maybe 200 kilometers, perhaps between 500 and 200 kilometers. And this altitude. is the first time ever that a spacecraft will orbit a moon other than our own. Indeed, yes. So, and in order to get there, you need to do an orbit insertion twice. And orbit insertions are serious business. They, they are critical maneuvers in which you have one shot to do it. Anything goes wrong. If your spacecraft, for whatever reason, cannot accomplish this, then the mission's over. Because you have the strong gravity of Jupiter at the same time pulling the spacecraft, right? So it's hard to get around in, in orbit around a small body. Around it, it is. Jupiter. So the orbit is, it tends to be very unstable. And in fact, it will take quite a bit of fuel, not only to do the injection, but that, then to maintain the orbit. Now, we have some notion of what this will be, but the exact orbital characteristics around Ganymede is something that we will be able to get with precision only once we're there. This is, after all, okay. uh, a mission of exploration. And so we need to explore by going into the unknown. And there are many uncertainties in this mission. The, the final goal of uh, the spacecraft is to assess the habitability of these uh, icy moons, in a way. So one, yes. what can we expect? Jews to find out in Ganymede. Could you tell us if there is life in the underground oceans of Ganymede or even Europa? Does it have the instruments to give us this kind of information? So it's an interesting question because we can resolve some specific questions. So the, the instrumentation that we fly on Jews is designed to answer the question, can these worlds sustain life. The, the question, is there life now present, is a different one and it's, mm -hmm. it's significantly different in the instruments that you would need to follow to fly. Mm -hmm. I think that the scope of the mission would be also different. So JUICE is designed to answer the first question, can life be present? Not is life present now? Habitability. Habitability, exactly. And, and so we hope to be able to find a definitive answer to this question. If the answer is yes, of course, the immediate question is the second one. Well, if there can be life, is there is life, life now? For this, of course, this would need a follow-up mission, something that would be designed and developed and flown, you know, in the years to come. Not yes. Now. Uh, one final question. Uh, you know, right now, I'm sure there are many young people in Greece watching this video and they are very excited about this mission. Some of them probably want to pursue uh, careers in engineering or space science. 
So as an accomplished engineer, what advice would you have to give to young people who watch this right now? Well, I would certainly encourage any young listener or follower of your channel to go and spend the energy required to form oneself in the field of STEM. So science, technology, engineering, and math. In my opinion, regardless of what comes in the future, I think it's clear that the answer can only be to be more focused on science and technology. There cannot be a solution to whatever problems we face in the future that does not involve more science and technology. So, in my opinion, we are entering now a golden age of space exploration with developments in, in many fields, with um, the technology reaching a maturity level that is allowing to do things that were just unthinkable five, ten years before. I mean, we have re reusable rockets, we have something absolutely major like Starship about to attempt the, its first launch also in the yes. coming days and so on. So the I think the field of space exploration is going to change a lot for the better in the coming years and we need more engineers, we need young people enthusiastic, devoted and with a, a passion for this field to come in. So I can only encourage them. Mr. Tanko, thank you very much for this interview. It was a true honor, indeed. Thank it you was very a pleasure. Three, two, one, top! Allumage Vulcan. Allumage AP, décollage.